Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to Germany and I've got a beer from a very, very good brewery for you today. And with it being November, I thought it was time to have a look at a German winter beer. So for this one, we are going to go to Privatbrauerei Eyinger and have a taste of their winter bot beer. And this is actually the third review that I'm filming from Eyinger. But um, it's only the first one that's going to appear on the channel. The other two I have are part of a German series that I didn't have time to finish before I moved to Sweden. So I'm going to finish that off when I go home to Scotland at Christmas. But we're going to have a taste of their Winterbock beer tonight. And there seem to be some rumours online that this beer is actually an alias of the Eyinger Celebrator. And I'm not sure where that comes from. It seems to be on Rate Beer that people have marked this beer as being the same as the Celebrator Doppelbock. But on Beer Advocate, it's done as a different beer. And as far as I can tell from the actual brewery website, it is a different beer. This is a seasonal release that they do, and it's got a different recipe from the Celebrator Doppelbock. So I'm really not sure why this rumour has come about but anyway we'll review the beer and we'll get on with it but as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you do want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual website links are in the video description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that will come from Eyinger as I said probably in January or February you'll see those two reviews and there's also my usual social media things so that's the Facebook Twitter and Untapped so feel free to connect with me through any of those Always interesting to hear from you guys that are watching the videos. And to my German viewers, I do apologise in advance if any of the pronunciations aren't quite right in the video. And please do let me know some of the other German beers you'd like me to have a go at. I actually reviewed a lot of German beers when I lived in Heidelberg, but I, and I really love them. So do recommend some beers you'd like me to try. But anyway, to tell you about Privatbrauerei Eyinger. So the Eyinger Brewery was founded in 1876 by Johann Liebhard, who had taken over his parents' estate that they had bought back in 1810. But he was assisted by his wife Maria, and the pair had actually been inspired to open a brewery because of the economic boom that was going on in Germany. This was a result of the victory over France in the Franco-Prussian War and then the subsequent unification of Germany under Bismarck. A very prosperous time for the new country in Europe, of course. But they began constructing their brewery in 1877 and they produced their first beer in February of 1878. And during this time, they could only brew beer between September and April during the winter. And that was largely because there wasn't artificial refrigeration as we have in the modern day. But the brewery continued to grow due to the development of railways, telephones, electricity, all of these sorts of things during the start of the 20th century. But Johann passed the brewery on to his eldest daughter's husband, August Zehentmeyer, but Johann actually died in 1910 and then August had to go and fight in the First World War. And during this period, the brewery was run by his wife and their three young, young daughters. But due to the rationing of malt during the First World War, the brewery was only brewing at about 15% of the total capacity of the brewery. But when Albus returned home from the war, the brewery was in trouble due to the economic crisis that gripped Germany. And they also suffered from a fire, but they managed to rebuild the brewery. But in the late 1920s, the brewery regained growth by bottling beer, and it started reaching Munich after the brewery had invested in a fleet of trucks. A lot of German breweries, when you read about the history, they like to tell you when they got their first truck, when they got their first railway car, and all of these sorts of things. It's quite an interesting perspective on the history of the brewery. But in 1936, the brewery passed on to the eldest daughter of August, and this was Maria and her husband, Franz Kerenz Inselkammer. And Inselkammer is actually still on the brewery name today. But the brewery production lowered during the Second World War, again due to rationing. However, France managed to grow the brewery very successfully in the post-war years. But the brewery actually bought the Platzo Hotel in Munich in 1953, and they invested heavily in infrastructure in the late 50s and 60s. And this was really to increase increase their capacity and things and this is why the um, the Eyinger Brauerei is one of a very of quite a few very established breweries in Munich these days. But in 1963, Maria and Franz passed on the brewery to their eldest son, Franz Jr., who had actually been trained in business and as a master brewer at Weinstefan. And his brother, Gusto, ran the brewery tavern. Peter ran the Platzo Hotel in Munich as well. And of course, Franz Jr. was the brewmaster at the Privatbrauerei Eyinger. But um, under their stewardship, the company continued to grow really quite steadily. And they actually celebrated their 100th anniversary in 1978. And the brewery 
had helped establish a local history museum to mark the occasion, but since then the brewery has completed drilling to find their own water source and they've also opened a new brewery building in 1999 which is one of the most technologically advanced facilities in Europe apparently. So when you try a beer from Privat Brauerei Ein, you've got the kind of typical thing that you have with a lot of the German breweries. They're very technologically advanced but they do kind of use a lot of the traditional uh, brewing techniques. So that's one of the really cool things when you go and try German beer. Very technologically advanced brewing process but it really does kind of stick to tradition. So just to list the other beers you can get from Privat Brauerei Eying, under the Eyinger name of course you get the Lager Hell, Bayerische Pils, Jahrhundert Beer, uh, Altbayerische Dunkel, Celebrator Doppelbock, very very nice beer, that's one of the ones you'll see appearing soon. The Keller Beer, Leiche Bloi Weiss, Bloi Weiss, Uweiss and also the Radler and in their seasonal range they've got this guy here, the Winterbock, the Kirte beer, the Frühlings beer and also a Weizenbock beer. So there's a good list of beers for you to try, all traditional German style so if you do get the chance I really would recommend that you try some of the Privat Brauerei Eyinger beers. The, one, the two I've reviewed for the Jahrhundert and the Celebrator but as I say you'll see those appear fairly soon, they were wonderful so I'm very very excited to actually try this beer for you today. So without further ado then, let's get stuck into that. I'll just bring up the camera and let you have a little quick look at the artwork on this one before we open it up. This is the typical Eyinger label on it there. You can see this is, I'm not sure if that's meant to be the Platzl Hotel that's on that there, but I think it might just be, it's one of the famous Munich churches. and I think it probably is the Platzl Hotel there, but this is the typical uh, Privat Brauerei Eyinger label. You can see on the back, it's got the, the Bayerische beer symbol on there. Privat Brauerei seit 1878, private brewery founded in 1878 and the bottle cap on this one is actually really quite cool and I think this is different from the other Eyinger ones that I had before. I think the Celebrator, the plain one and the Jahrhundert had another different bottle cap but it's really nicely presented and it comes in at 6.7% and it's a German Doppelbock beer. So without further ado then, let's get this guy open and we'll get on with the tasting. So as you can see, a nice smoky opening as we get this guy out but as I was telling you this beer and um, there do seem to be rumors of this beer being an alias of the Celebrator Doppelbock. The Celebrator Doppelbock incidentally is rated as the best uh, Doppelbock beer in the world on rate beer and some people are saying that this is an alias of it but I'm sure we'll find out when we do the tasting. Um, I'm not sure if this is the right glass for a Bock beer, I've drank Bock beers out of this one but these tulip glasses are the best all round glasses but I don't think the glass makes much of a difference to the flavour you pick up, it just really, um, all it does really is kind of distribute the beer around the mouth differently, it doesn't really affect the actual flavour which of course is the chemical makeup of the beer. But as you can see this beer is poured pretty much pitch black actually, if I put the light over this beer there is a little bit of a red edge to it, it comes across as being a bit more of a kind of rosewoody colour, sort of a rosewood ebony colour this one. You can see there's a finger of a very frothy beige head on this one, very German looking head actually. That could have come straight, it looks just like it could have come straight from one of these taps in a brow house in Germany. Very very attractive looking beer. If I put my fingers behind it you can see it's not transparent in the slightest. Very very attractive looking beer. A little bit of carbonation is visible, quite a few little bubbles just going towards the bottom of the head but these Doppelbock beers are usually very very smooth so very oily big full bodied beers a few big bubbles just stick into the side of the glass too but quite a lot of little bubbles just heading up towards the bottom of the head so let's have a look at the aroma of this one see in comparison to some Doppelbocks I've come across this is actually quite a light aroma that's on this one but it has all the elements you would expect to the beer. The bread is really quite prominent in this one. There's a nice big German rye bread malt coming out of this beer. Smells really nice. A little bit of nutty character in there too. But that nice big bready malt is coming out quite well on this one. Of course, as is typical with the Doppelbock, you're getting a bit of a nice kind of dark toasted caramel on top of that. A little bit of the kind of treacle or molasses as they would call it in America as well and you can pick up the red fruits coming out of this too. If you sugar it up a bit more they become a bit sharper so there's a sort of plum and raisiny element to it but if you just kind of smell it without sugar it, without stirring it up a little bit 
it comes across as more of a fig or a kind of candied fruit aroma. The kind of red fruity esters that you get from some of these Doppelbock beers, they always make me think of the little heart sweets that you get in Haribo's. Of course, another wonderful German creation. But yeah, has all this beer has all the elements you expect of a German Doppelbock beer. I think the bread in this one is a good bit more prominent in some of the than in some of the other ones I've come across. As I always say with the beers, just take a little bit of time and have a go at the aroma of them. You get some really beautiful things and it always gives you an idea of what you're going to taste in this beer. But yeah, I think the bread is really quite prominent in this one, but nice dark caramel, a bit of molasses or treacle, you know, the really dark stuff in there. But there's a nice big German rye bread malt that underpins this beer. It smells really nice. You can pick up just a little bit of a chocolatey sweetness, a kind of milky chocolate sweetness coming out of this one but there's a nice red fruit in there as well. So without further ado then, let's get stuck into this beer. So this is the Winterbock, the winter seasonal beer from Privatbrauerei Eyinger in Munich. So, Prost. Now, mouthfeel of this one really wasn't what I was expecting actually. Hmm. The carbonation in this one, the first thing you'll notice about this beer, the carbonation in it is quite active. I'm used to German beers being very smooth and very, um, really, especially the Doppelbock beers, you're used to them being a little bit more oily, but the first thing that happens with your palate in this beer is that the carbonation comes in and just rolls right across, right across the, the front of your tongue, head and back there. And the other thing about this beer is that the caramel is really quite dark on this. This is one of the darkest caramel malt bases I've come across. It almost comes across as being a little bit smoked actually. But yeah, much as you'd expect from this beer, it is very, very malt forward. So you've got a nice, in the middle of the palate, the underpinning of this beer, you can get just a little bit of that smooth German rye bread, the, the one that I was talking about in the aroma, you've got a nice big bready rye character that just blankets the middle of your tongue there and there's a lot of stuff coming in on top of that. There's a little bit of a kind of nutty or woody flavour that infuses into that and that comes out a little bit more in the aftertaste but immediately you've got a nice big kind of dark, quite roasty bitterness that just forms in the middle of your palate there. Just pay attention to that or just let it develop a wee bit more. Yeah, it's almost as if the beer is a little bit smoked. There's a bit of a kind of smoky bitterness that just lingers in the very, very middle of your palate there. It's, it's quite a nice addition to the beer. And, you know, if based on the taste alone, I can tell you, this is not, it is definitely not an alias of the Celebrator beer. I have no idea, just on the taste of this beer and in comparison to the Celebrator, there is absolutely not a chance in hell that this is a, an alias beer. I have no idea where people are getting that idea from. Mm. This smoky character that is in this beer is not in that Celebrator beer. This is definitely a different recipe. Mm. But yeah, sorry, that was a bit of a tangent. As I say, that smoky character that's in the middle of the tongue there, that just sits there and you've got a nice, really dark, um, slightly smoky, bitter character in the middle of your palate there. There's some sweet caramel just around that, but there's a good bit of the dark kind of treacle and molasses in there. The roasted characters of this beer are really quite nice, actually. I'll just put a little bit more of this into the glass. I'll let it develop its, that famous German head again. But yeah, it, it, this is a really, really nice beer. If you get the chance to try the Winterbock, definitely do it. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Mm. There's a bit of a chocolatey character coming out of this beer as well. That's quite a mild flavour, I would say. It's mainly, the main focus of this beer has to be that kind of nice German rye bread malt base and then the dark, smoky bitterness that comes out on the top there. Mm. As you let the flavour progress a bit more, like I was saying, 
there's a sort of woody and nutty flavour coming out of this beer as well but it's really really nice that as you move out towards the edge of the tongue of course the very edge of the tongue is where you'll get the hoppy characters of this beer so at the back corners of the palate you've got a nice um, sort of earthy hop character coming out there it gets a bit it's quite um, dark and bitter in the very back corners but as you move a bit further forward it becomes a bit more smooth and a lot as you move to the front of the tongue it does get a little bit more of a dry character to it. Maybe there's a little bit of um, a florally character. Of course, this beer probably uses noble German hops, and um, you can just feel a little bit of that around the very front of the tongue there. But yeah, that smoky character in this beer is really prominent. It almost drowns out the fruitiness that you would normally expect from the Bock beer, actually. If you move just behind the very front curve of the tongue, there's a little bit of an oily uh, character that comes out there, and that's some of the fruitiness in there. There's a little bit, it's these kind of red fruity esters that are coming out. There's a little bit of a sort of um, raisin and plums, just a little bit of sharpness, but I want to say that this beer, the most prominent fruity characteristic is more of a figgy character, or a little bit of a kind of red candied fruit. As I said, the thing that these beers always remind me of are their fruity characteristics is the kind of red heart sweeties that you get in Haribo. Mm. But yeah, this is a really, really quite nice beer. Really would recommend that you try this if you get the chance. If you like a bocked beer and you like smoked beer, this one almost makes a kind of hybrid of the two different styles, but it's a very dark um, almost coffee-ish smoke flavour that you're getting from this one. It's not like the meaty smoked flavours that you get from the Bamberg Rauch beers. It's, it's definitely a high, this one is a really a real kind of hybrid between the coffee smoked beers and the uh, and the, the traditional German Doppelbock. Really really nicely done. Mm. But yeah, beautiful beautiful beer. Give it a go if you get the chance. In terms of the mouthfeel of this one, I would say this is definitely a full bodied beer. The carbonation in it isn't as smooth as you're going to come across from a German beer. The carbonation is quite moderate. Maybe in terms of a Doppelbock though, it probably is quite high. As I said, when you first take the beer in, the carbonation comes in with a good bit of attack there. But overall, the mouthfeel of this beer is actually quite oily. There's a good little bit of alcohol warmth from this one, which is quite unusual because it is only about 6.7%. German Bock beers, especially Doppelbocks, from what I can remember, some of them kind of can push up towards about 8%. So this is comparatively lighter than that. But as you would expect with a, with a Doppelbock beer, it is very malt forward. The smoky character in this one gives the malt quite a bit of bitterness, which is quite a unique feature of this bock, I would say. But there's also just a, a small little bit of a juicy fruit characteristic, and you are getting a little bit of um, a hoppy dryness around the edge of the tongue too. A little bit of earthy dryness in the back corners of the palate, but then a slightly lighter, maybe slightly floral character around the front edges of the tongue there. But overall, this is a really, really nice doppelbock, and as I say, it's quite different from the other ones I've come across before. And yeah, mainly it's because of that kind of smoky element of the flavour. And like I've said, this is probably, I think, the third or fourth time I've said it. There is no way that this beer is an alias of the Celebrator Bock. The Celebrator Doppelbock is a lot sweeter than this, and it doesn't have that kind of lingering smoky character in the malt base that this one has. This is definitely a different recipe. So as I say, I have no idea where there's ru these rumours are of this being an alias an alias beer comes from. So whoever started that, hang your head in shame, this is not the same beer. It's an, uh, this one is an absolutely beautiful beer, and if you get the chance, I would recommend that you try any of the Eyinger beers. The three that I've tried for you now are excellent, so give them a go, but I definitely want to review more of their stuff in the future. So this beer I would recommend to you if you like smoked beers, or if you like the traditional Doppelbox style. This one kind of meets somewhere in the middle and it's another really, really good beer from the Eyinger Brewery, a brewery who I would highly recommend if you want to try some special Munich beers. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this beer review. It's been really, really cool to do another one from a brewery that I rate so highly, especially when it's a seasonal beer like this that is a little bit harder to get a hold of. 
So I hope you've enjoyed the beer review. If you have tried it yourself, please let me know your own thoughts in the comment section below. Always interesting to hear from you guys that are watching the videos. As I say, German viewers, please recommend some other German beers you'd like me to have a look at. I always enjoy my German beer reviews, so please do comment. I thank you for watching my beer reviews. So in the meantime, until the next one, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Many more German reviews to come. I hope you've enjoyed this one, and go and check out Privat Brauerei Eyinger from Munich. Slange.